Jennifer Hi. Fisher. Okay, first of all, when you walked in, your I could feel your energy down the hall. You are a force. Like, you are, or did you, you hear me coming with my boots? No, I just, I could physically feel it right before you knocked and it was like you just blew through the doors. <laughs> I have a tendency to do that. <laughs> I'm so sorry I was late. No, please. I, hate being I late. love when it's people like a are late. Oh, I Is hate that it. Weird? I think it's so rude. I You do. No, yes, I'm a- I like to be early. I'm so embarrassed. I hate being late, so I'm sorry. No, you're so fine and I always like it because it gives me a minute to just like <laughs> take a reboot before diving in. So don't be sorry. Well, here we are back in New York with everyone back and oh my God, fashion that, week starting. It's crazy. The energy in New I know, York right crazy, now is, right? is it heightened or is it because I haven't been in the city for a while? It feels heightened today. More today than it does. ever. Today it does. I think everybody's back and I think it's it's go time. School starting. My it's son's in college today. My daughter started high school. It's everyone's back. Everyone's back. Everyone's back. Full force. Full like force. It's, I know. I'm, I'm feeling... Such an intense shift. In Are you the feeling air. empowered by it? Because I am, but it's it's stressful, but it's also empowering. I feel I have waves of feeling empowered and then overwhelmed, but that's also my baseline. Like, when do your kids start school? Tomorrow. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, you so can't true. help it. At the end of the day, you're a mom first and foremost. So I it's, know. it's you don't realize the stress of it, it's it's the stress that you're just going to always carry. You know, I was stressed this morning. I couldn't figure it out. And I was like, oh my god, it's because Shane's starting college and Drew's starting high school. I woke up feeling it. I feel it so much. Yeah, I know it's true. And and I think giving ourselves that grace because I want to be involved in all of the things. I want to be able to take Benjamin to football practice and Eleanor to her activities and like be there for everything that I can. But it feels like... A lot. Yeah, it feels a lot and almost... Well, you're doing a lot. I know. You're doing a lot. And so you have to give yourself some grace for that. And it's, it's you know, and you're not going to be there for everything and that's okay. Yeah. That's one thing, having been through it, advice that I can give you is that you're going to go to the things that you really need to go to. And some of the things you don't have to go to and it's okay. Right. And they won't, you know, they're not going to hold it against you. And by the way, they're not going to remember. They're little. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, I if know. I ask my kids now, did I, do you remember me going to the art fair when you were in third grade? And they'll be like, what art fair? You know, it's funny because my most vivid memories are when my parents didn't come to things. Well, I like think when you get older, and I think, me. listen, when they get older, it's important that you show up to the science fair and it's important that you show up to them making a presentation in class. Those things are very important and you right. need to be there for that and recitals and things like that. But there's some things that you have to give yourself an excuse for that maybe you don't have to go to and maybe some parents aren't going also because they're working the same way you are. I know. You know, it's it's something that you can't compare yourself to and you have to do what works for you and your family. And, you know, you can't you can't let people's judgment make you feel guilty. Thank you. You're welcome. It's true. It's true. I, it's hard to learn. And I say that to a lot of women that have younger kids. And it's something that you have to do what feels right for you. And sometimes you won't be able to make it, but you're going to do your best for what you really feel you need to be at. I think what I've realized is really looking at, like reprioritizing the things that I know, like for the kids, like I, I always, I really do try to be at as many as I can or Noah, or our nanny. So I'm so grateful for that. But it's also not overpiling myself with the events. Well, that's with the, you. Like, I, I yeah. think that's where that's I feel. That's your choice, where you have to start. I know. I'm like, I said yes to too many things this week. And I'm like, <gasps> You need to, you need to, and I, I was talking to one of my friends this week and I said, you know, I'm really at the point right now where I'm only saying yes to things I truly feel that I need to support and want to be at. And for those who support me back, that's there you another go. thing. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. It's important to to support people that support you. And yes. if, if maybe you're not being supported, maybe it's, you don't need to go. Okay. Uh- and Cancel stay- those two things today, Ava. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you still have a Instagram for the night, you it know, never happens. So don't gut, worry about it. You know my what I'm gut saying? just gave me the answer. Thank you. No, it's yeah, true. Yeah, it's true. It's You can't be so hard on yourself. But I do think it's important, you know, outside of weeks like Fashion Week, like this week, to be home for your kids at night. I always made a point of being home to cook food, you know, whenever I can for my kids. Like, that's also my therapy. I always say, you know, I used to say I don't go to therapy, I cook. But then I started therapy after my dad died. But... I really believe that those are those really important times to be home. And your ki- that's what your kids remember. The most important that's thing to me remember. is being home at night with my that's kids. That's what your kids remember. So like you don't have to go to those six things. And, you know, what I do sometimes is I go home and I'll cook them dinner and be around them. And then when they're off doing their homework, you go out. 
Right. Because they're not going to notice if you're there or that. And, and you don't, they don't need you then. Right. You know? Yeah. You get it. You know what's important what's not. No, I do. You feel it if you're doing something wrong, too. So you have to listen to that, too. That's how I felt today. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know why you feel this way. And, like, I am a big listen so clearly to the hell yeses. But sometimes things feel like a hell yes six weeks ago in the heat of the moment. That's okay. And as it gets closer, you're like, why the hell did I? But that's another thing, too. I think it's okay to change your mind. And it's okay to shift. And it's okay to reprioritize your day based off of your family. But it's not their family. It's your family. And everybody mm-hmm. else has something else going on, too. And half the, that's what I say this, too. I think people are so self-centered, too. They're not even going to notice. Yeah, maybe they will. <laughs> they're not. One of the photos. But people are really worried about themselves. It's so, so true. So, you know, do what you feel you need to do for you and your family first. Okay. Thank you You're for giving me You're welcome. permission for something <laughs> I felt right before this. I, I literally it. feel like... I think as you get older as a parent, exhale. too, the more, you know, the more you listen to that... Um, the better your choices are. You really need to listen to that. It's important. It is. It is. Where do you get this, like this energy from? Like you have this zest for life. I'm grateful every day when I wake up, the moment I wake up. And I, I've always felt that way. But when my father died a year ago, it Mm. really, you know, he, he got sick and died very fast. And he was, he he had the most zest for life. He was an energetic, amazing, magnetic person. And he was so important to me. Mm -hmm. And to watch him deteriorate so quickly and then pass really gave me this newfound sense of grateful, gratefulness for every day and every moment that I'm here. Yes, it's very stressful to do what I do and to have this company and to be growing it and to, you know, the employees, the design, the events, the everything. But how lucky am I to be here, to be awake and living Mm -hmm. every day to do it? You know, it's, it's, I think a lot of people need to refocus and and think about how lucky we are to, because it's, it's limited. We're not here that long. I know. So you need to make the most of every day and stop making excuses. I mean, uh, right? Thank God someone's saying it because it's just people, people make a are lot of excuses. So many. I think people are caught up in fear. I think people are caught up in, like I said, excuses for not having to have that forward momentum because they're scared of the outcome. They're scared of failure. They're scared of what will come if maybe it does work out. But I'm excited about those kind of things. Those things, those things get me going. Those me things too. turn me on. Like I love that. So the unknown of of what the potential is is very exciting to me. The power of possibility. Yeah. How great is that? The, Why would you be afraid of that? I live for that yeah. feeling. Yeah. It like it ignites my I soul. wish more women would uh feel comfortable making the choice to move forward and put one step, one foot in front of the other every day towards their goal. You know, I talk to a lot of women, and I'm sure you do too, mm-hmm. that are terrified and petrified, and they have a really hard time with forward momentum because they're too scared of the outcome. Rejection, failure, embarrassment. You have to not be afraid to fail. Failure's your friend. Rejection's like the greatest thing that could happen to you because for, for me, every time I've been rejected, it's taken me in the path of where I need to be going, my true sense of, of where I'm really meant to be. At the time, it doesn't feel like that. But the mm-hmm. more and more you're rejected, which is a lot, and I've had a ton of rejection, you realize that you're just being redirected and recentered for your path. It's the truth. It is the truth. What was one of your biggest rejections that oh, made God, you? Oh, God, I can tell you a million. I mean, there's so many. Really? There's so many. And it's funny now I look back at them at the time. They seemed so important and groundbreaking for my business or who I am as a person. And it's funny now you look back at it and you're like, you don't need any of those things that you think that you really needed. Like it's ego. You think people or everything, business, opportunities, awards, everything, so many things, but those things are just ego. It's not what you really need. So you have to kind of, I think it just comes with experience and age too. I'm an old lady. So I, I think, mean, yeah, please. <laughs> I've been through, I've been through a lot. So I, you know, I've come out of it now, uh, thankfully more positive and hopeful for the future because I've seen myself in kind of every situation that I could possibly see myself in. I mean, you seem like untouchable. Like you, you just have this I'm sure it's through these experiences and having, how long have you had your company? 18 years, a very long time. So, you know, we were direct to consumer. We were under the radar. People are like, you've been around so much longer than I thought. 
But I really, I really wanted to be home to raise my kids. It was very important to me. So the momentum that's happening now is purposeful and I've done it intentionally knowing that my kids are grown and it's time to turn it up. Mm, you're turning it up. You're everywhere. <laughs> I love it. I'm working really hard. My team works really hard. They, everybody behind the scenes works very hard for me and I'm very grateful for everything that they do. You really have to have like a force of a team behind you. Well, you do. And you really want people that want to be there. And if the people that don't want to be there, you can't get mad at that. No. You know, things change, things shift. Yep. New people come in. It's I business. Know. It's not That's personal. Probably been one of my biggest lessons this year is being able to, sorry, hmm. separate like having relationships with someone and then understanding that. In work. Yeah. One thing that you have to learn is they're not your friends. And it's really hard because they feel like they are. Mm -hmm. And they can be in some way, but at the end of the day, you're working together and it's a professional relationship. And I learned, I had a really hard experience early on in my company um, where I thought that person really was my friend and part of my business and had my back. And that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Right. It's okay. It wasn't meant to be. Yeah. I don't blame this person for that. It's not that person's fault. It's, you know, it's not my fault. It just was time to part ways. Right. And maybe it didn't happen in the way or you, the way that you wanted it to. Right. That's okay. It is. And you have to learn to let it go and not take it personally and move forward. It's been my biggest, like, growth. I think being able to wish them well yes, and move on. A hundred percent. And yeah. and I think that thank God for the work that I do and that, you know, keeps me really grounded and stable. I, I, it's, it's a how, hard lesson to learn because yeah. you're in it and you guys are together every day as I, you know, it's, it's hard. Yeah. It's a really hard. And it that's is. something that's, it's, it's just growth in business. Mm -hmm. It's all it is. And be grateful that you had the experience already so you can learn from it and move forward from it. I'm so grateful. Like, it's it's one thing. Everybody goes through it. Everybody has it. Yeah. You're not alone. Everybody has that experience. You know, the more business yeah. women that I've spoken to, everyone's had the same experience that I had as, as you. Yeah. So it's something that you can connect with other women about and find your strength from that and, the, and be able to move on from it. It's true. Yeah. It's and hard. like it's forgiveness like a death. It's in hard. your heart. It is. It is. And it's like very really hard learning to find forgiveness, like truly forgiveness. Well, you know, you think things are going to last forever and they don't. Yeah. And that's what you have to realize that it's true. everything is temporary and people shift and you don't know what's going on in their life and they don't know exactly what's going on in mm -hmm. your life. And and that's part of the forgiveness is that you just don't know. And right. you, can, you can't read someone's mind. Yeah. No, you, you can't. Know? And, and if they're unhappy, they're unhappy. Let them go. Yeah. A hundred percent. And someone else, there's a million people knocking on your door, I'm sure. So yeah. you have to think about the positives that come out of that and the opportunity that you're going to have from new people and new energy and that forward momentum that those people are going to bring you in your business. Oof, girl. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> no, it's so it's true. It's the truth. And letting go with love, like it does, yeah. like it, I, it's like deep it's in my personal. compassion. It's not personal. No. That's been like, the process I think sometimes you have to go through as a businesswoman. It and is. It is. And having it's hard. A, it's I, a, I it's, feel for you. I, yeah. I feel for you because I know I know what that first one feels like. And it's it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. But all you can do is wish them well. Yes. And, a hundred percent. A million percent. Yeah. How did you start, Jennifer Fisher? Like, I'm so curious oh my gosh, to know. Completely by accident. Do you not know really? the story? I'll tell you the story. Give, yeah, it's give crazy. Us so. I went to USC. I studied business marketing. I thought that I wanted to be a publisher of a magazine. I don't know why, but I just, I was the kid who had <laughs> Vogue magazine plastered on my wall when I was a kid. My mom was cool enough to get me a subscription. And I literally plastered the wall in my bedroom so much so that when my parents sold the house, they asked to keep the Vogue wallpaper in the bedroom. <laughs> and I was like, kind of artistic. So yeah, it looks really cool. <laughs> so I studied business marketing. I was the kid that was always a hustler though. My parents traveled a lot. I started a business every time they went out of town. I started my first company, JJ Buttoneers, when my parents went to Vegas because my dad was a high roller and would go like every week into Las Vegas. I lived in Montecito in Santa Barbara. Okay. A tiny little beach town, which now is more famous, but at the time it was a little tiny beach town in Santa Barbara. And I was always starting companies. Um, cut to, I had my first internship at USC at a magazine called LA Style, which is now gone. 
And I would watch the racks of clothing go by when I was sitting on the ad side. And I was like, I love clothes. I am on the wrong side of this. I don't want to be on the side selling ads. So I left that internship getting my first job being a stylist. My friend worked at Propaganda Films, which is a big production company in Los Angeles. And and there was a director that was looking for a commercial wardrobe stylist. And he was like, listen, your friend is stylish. I met him once. He said, I'll give you a shot. It was a Pace, Pace Picante, like, salsa commercial or something. <laughs> and I had like a sheriff, a beauty queen and some other guy and I dressed them and I did a great job and and I became a stylist, which was so random because I never even be- thought that I would do it. But I ended up styling commercials for about 10 years. I'd wow. have teams. I had uh, lots of directors that I worked for. I never had an agent. It was all word of mouth and relationships. I learned that very young that everything in work is relationships. Um, mm-hmm. And not just who you know, but really making sure that you foster those relationships and continue them. And uh, I was doing big jobs, Amex, Pepsi, you know, beer commercials, everything. And I uh, met a guy in LA, uh, Kevin Fisher, and we started dating. And when we were dating, I got diagnosed with something called a desmoid tumor. Mm-hmm. I had my breast implants done in 1997. And I noticed something on my armpit in 1998. And my doctor was like, it's nothing. Just stop wearing racer back tops. It's just a cyst or something. Well, it turns out it was this desmoid tumor, which is a soft tissue sarcoma. It's not breast cancer, uh, but it can uh, metastasize if it's given blood flow. So they did needle biopsy. They couldn't pull anything from it. So they did a surgical biopsy, which they should have never done. But mm. I was lucky that it didn't metastasize. Oof. But at the time, doctors didn't know how to treat them. So I went through 12 rounds of high-dose methotrexate chemotherapy oh at Cedar sinai Yeah. And I, I, this amazing commercial director I was working for, he was allowing me to work during my chemo. And it was really helpful for me mentally. Um, I wasn't feeling great, but it was help, helpful. Um, and at St. Vincent's here in New York. And Kevin proposed to me during uh, during all of that. And then we got married a year after. And when we wanted to talk about having kids, my oncologist said, no fucking way. You can't. Your tumor grows from estrogen. So we went through surrogacy unsuccessfully. It was illegal at the time to have a surrogate carry for you in the state of New York, but it was legal in Vermont, New Jersey, Florida, and California. So we decided to do it from, in California because Kevin grew up in Brentwood. And mm-hmm. we, we had the grandparents there. So we're like, let's just do it in California. Um, pregnant two times, 12 weeks, miscarried, 16 weeks, miscarried. Then she quit and came back to New York. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go through IVF and just try this. Didn't work. And then I was like, okay, this is starting to affect our relationship. Let's take a time out. And the doctor's like, you need to adopt or figure it out or get an egg donor or another surrogate, not use your egg. And that's when I got pregnant. And that was my son, Shane. And I kept the baby. I was like, listen, I'll sign whatever you want, but I'm keeping this baby. This has been three years of hell. Like, I'm going to do this. And total normal pregnancy. They treated it as high risk. It wasn't. Uh, He was born and people were giving me gifts to represent him. And I didn't feel that any of them suited my personal style. I was like, none of these are cool enough. Like, they're beautiful and cute. Yeah. But I'm not going to wear any of that. Um, So I you know, being a resourceful stylist, I went up to 47th Street and knocked on doors and found someone to make me this very simple dog tag that said Shane. It was very important to me that it said his full name. And at the time, no one was really doing customizable fine jewelry like that, especially charm necklaces. Everyone's like, charms belong on bracelets, not necklaces. And I was like, (laughs) I'd collected charms my entire life. When my mom would travel, she'd always bring me back a sterling silver charm from wherever they went. So I literally have this giant charm charm bracelet that I wanted to make a necklace out of. And everyone thought I was out of my mind. So I made this necklace and I wore it on set when I was a stylist. And it was an instant conversation piece. Like everybody was like, what does that say? And I said, oh, it's my son. It's Shane. Mm. Oh my gosh, my wife would love that. Can you make her one? And I started literally making them for people on set. Wow. Yeah. And I made one for Uma Thurman. And she happened to get it the day she was shooting a Glamour magazine cover. And she wore it on the cover of Glamour. But with that aside, like it just people were wanting it's, something that was per- personalized, customized that you couldn't just walk into a store and right. buy and everyone had the exact same, you know, they, people wanted something different. So I was making different shapes. I was doing different chains. I was just doing different things. And one day Kevin walked in, we lived in Soho at the time, walked into the bedroom and there was orders all over the bed. And he's like, Jen, this is a business. I think it's time to switch careers. So I started a website selling direct to consumer customizable fine jewelry. <laughs> this is years amazing. Ago. Yeah, that's how it started. Isn't, do you look back now and think like it was always this or do you really think like? I do. I do. So my grandfather was a silversmith. He was a polo player in Santa Barbara. And I grew up when I was younger, when my parents would be making dinner, my grandfather would come over to the house and my dad always made sure that my grandfather had a workshop. 
And so he was kind of a badass. He was like this cowboy that always wore a cow. He would wear a cowboy hat and he taught like, you know, Sylvester Stallone and Tommy Lee Jones and all those like old Hollywood guys how to play polo. And he was just super cool. And he was always engraving silver and doing really beautiful things. And I really forgot until Mm. after I started the brand, like how it was ingrained in my brain that I'd watch my grandfather literally make jewelry every night. I didn't wear a lot of jewelry though, which is interesting though, before I did all of this, I was really a watch girl. I was really masculine and I never really, I was never wore a lot of feminine jewelry. I collected watches. I mean, can we just like take a moment to just take in your sick jewelry? Thank you. It's so good. Thank you. You have such a way of putting it together too. Thank you. Like I love when you show. It's fun to do it. It's fun to do all of that. It's a form of expression. It is. And no one's going to do it the same way you do it, which is how cool is that? Right. Like your ear and even is not going to look try, like someone else's ear, the way that be, you layer your yeah, earrings. The like way you, you have a style it. of that too, which is incredible, the way you do it. You Thank know, you. we all have our way of doing it. Jewelry is like your armor. And it's so fun. Like how, what a gift that I can make all of these things for, for women, men, everybody that sort of makes them feel protected every day that has, you know, I, listen, I, my mom is Jewish. My father was not. I never wore a cross until my father died, but this says his Papa John on the back. So I wear it. You know, it's like it, it, none of us are going to express ourselves the exact same way that someone else is. No. You know, and it, jewelry is really important. I think it is too. I love it. It just, it, it makes me feel alive. Like if I don't have it on, you I feel really well. so naked. Thank you. I remember like giving birth and I had no jewelry on and I was like, I just don't <laughs> feel like myself. Can I like keep <laughs> one thing? You took everything off? Everything. They made remember. me take I'm every so single piece. It. Really? Yes. I don't even remember that. Well, I, I right. had, it was, I vividly remember it for Eleanor because I had a scheduled C-section. So it was like, I had to prepare. And I thought it was just going to be like, walk in, easiest thing. Both it C-sections, wasn't. both of them? I had two C-sections. That's where like the, the conversation before where you're like, are you done? I'm like, just it's like daunting to even think about having another C-section also that it, I don't have to, right? Like if I, if I chose to like could go another way, but the whole idea of that, I'm just like, I don't think so. It's a lot. Having children is a lot. Isn't it? It's a lot. It's a huge responsibility and it's a lot of work. It is. And and I, I feel like women don't talk about it enough. Like I really just, Yes. Like, I think it's this thing that, of course, how gr- I, I know how grateful you are. Like, I am the most grateful to be able to have carried my children, to have children. I know how many people Cannot struggle to bring babies into this world. Right. But I also think it's a disservice to not really share how hard it is. And by the way, I find the ages the kids are right now the most challenging oh get ready it just changes <laughs> every day for the best every or the worst phase, it's both it's both oh, and my, it all they depends. do is fight see they i fight. got really lucky see it we, and oh that's the God. thing is all of us have different kids and all of us all of our kids have different relationships Their kids didn't fight my kids didn't really fight i know it's interesting they're t- they're 20 months apart they didn't really fight. They're more like best friends. Like I'll be, I'll walk into my, you know, I haven't heard, my son is at college. So I never hear from him. And my, I'll walk in, my daughter's on the phone with Shama and Shaney. Like he doesn't call me. He calls you. <laughs> yeah. So that's really, but listen, you, you are in a phase right now that is not easy. I think it's, it's I know. really hard. I thought it was going to get more breathable, like it does. four and seven or It ebbs Benjamin's and flows and you'll see the cycles of it. And then at one point it's almost like it's other people's kids. It's how your kids respond and react to social settings. Things. It's, it just changes, right? You know, it I, does. I, I, it's just different. I don't I mean, want to say it's harder. It's different. So for me, I wasn't a little baby, baby person. Like for me, like the little infancy phase was really hard for me. Was it? Yes. I can so. eat that alive. See, I find that to be like I'm just like, oh my god, give me a baby. Yeah, I was like, like why I don't you love just talk it. to me? I find it so <laughs> easy. I didn't. I didn't. That was harder for me. That was so harder for me. I'm in a were... challenging season, but like what season? You'll is see it? though. It. it it changes. And then you'll be like, this is so great. We've had a breakthrough. They're different now. And then something will come up and you'll, it's just, it's a, it's an experience. It is. It is an experience. And it's great. And then you raise these humans and then you look at them and you're like, oh my God, I cannot believe that you're my child. I, and that I, I raised that you. And, and the, like the strength that comes from that when you see them. My son recently, my son was very quiet. 
And he recently sort of came out of his shell right before college. And I just was in Los Angeles with a bunch of my girlfriends, of which one I grew up with and had known him since he was a baby. And she was like, Jen, I'm blown away. He's a man. Just he looks conversation, like a little man. just not even looking like a man, just, yeah. just eye contact, conversation, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't her, uh, you know, questioning him. It was a conversation. Mm -hmm. She's like, it's amazing. What are the most important things to you with raising your kids? Like what were the values and discipline morals? Discipline is very important. How I was, do you discipline? I'd love to hear strict. how you discipline. My parents were very strict. I'm the boss. Ooh. <laughs> There you go. It's not fear, but it is in a way it's, they know, they know the line. It's almost like with my husband. I know if I'm going to piss Kevin off, my husband, I know how far I can really go until he's going to get really mad. So your kids, like you need to teach them that line, that boundary of you fuck around and you do this, you know, what's going to happen. Not, not in a violent or yelling, but right. you know that I'm going to not allow you to act that way. So did you take when they things were babies, away? take things away, take them out of restaurants, remove them from settings, do not allow them to behave mm -hmm. a certain way. I'm a big remover of settings. I'm a big remover. Like no scenes, manners, table mm -hmm. manners. I took my kids to restaurants when they were very young, taught them how to eat in restaurants and to, you know, adult early. Same. Uh, but it does involve a certain level of patience and discipline. And you are standing up, grabbing your kid and walking out of a lot of restaurants. Right. And having conversations on the street. You know, that's and part not of it. giving them the thing, not like giving them the, the thing. The ice and sometimes cream. you give them the thing, right? And sometimes that doesn't work out. But you, there's a there's a line. Right. So I think I was really good at that boundary. I mean, listen, who uh, who knows? Now my daughter's going to be a junior in high school, and things are change, changing in parties, and we're out of COVID, and my son's in college. I'm not saying I did a perfect job, but I'm hoping that I set them into the world with a level of them understanding how far they can really take things. Right. But I'm I'm in a really I'm in a scary spot right now with my son with the drinking in college and mm. everything. It's it's terrifying. And you just you just I, have to hope for the best. I know. I think about that. It scares Clouded me. Clouded judgments difficult, you know, they're drinking, they're doing things that they didn't do before. So right. it's hard. It's scary. It's so scary. Yeah. And you just don't know. It's like such a, oof, you, don't know. you just, you really have to surrender. Yeah. It, it, that's what's really hard. I still like 360, my son in Wisconsin though too. But what's so funny, I was having this conversation. <laughs> my husband said, he went to 7-Eleven and spent $50 at like 2 a.m. And I was like, is it booze or is it food? It's like, that's the new way of tracking your kids. Right, right. And it's so funny. <laughs> I put it up on Instagram and so many women said to me, that's so funny. One girl goes, I was in Europe and my my parents were really concerned. They thought Zara was a bar and they were concerned at how much money I was spending at Zara. <laughs> so it's funny. It's 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 right. just, it changes and it's just different cycles and, you know. Yeah, yeah. it really is. Just have to hope for the best. And we're not done and it's not over and there's going to be a lot more shit. So it's just bracing yourself for it. It's true. And grounding yourself as I look over and you have your card and your crystal Jill, that you pulled my today. New, this is my new, my friend, Deb. That's a beautiful crystal. Isn't it beautiful? She chose them for all of us. We went to the, you know, I'm not a huge Look at us. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not a huge woo-woo, but I am. No, um, but... So I got invited. I, I had to be in the Hamptons for a work event last week, and there was the blue moon last week. Mm -hmm. And my girlfriends had planned this blue moon ceremony. Deb was in charge, and my friend Marcy, and they they did this. We had a really beautiful time. There were seven of us on the beach, and we drew cards. My card was seven blessings of Eve, which was actually crazy. I mean, I, I started. I we had to read our cards out loud to each other. And I literally started breaking down, crying. Mm. A few of us did because it was. This is about allowing yourself to show your true power and to not feel um, that you have to hide yourself. So, and that for me was really important That's last right week. That's where you are right now. That's where I am. You know, it's hard owning a business and parenting and all of it. And it's, it's hard to allow yourself to really feel that you can fully be yourself. Judgment is everywhere. Criticism is everywhere. Everywhere. How do you handle it? I mean, I now just, it's, it's, you, you hear it. It happens. It comes from everybody. You put I yourself know. out there, you're going to get it. Oh. <laughs> I find fuel from it in some ways now because I know that a lot of that comes from fear from others. Oof. You're such a force. <laughs> Thanks. I, I've done Thanks. taking some of that. I've just experienced. You know, I, I've been through a lot. I've been through a lot. And it's, it's, um, it's nice to come out uh, older and a little more grounded. You know, I don't give a fuck anymore, to be honest. And I think that's what it's about. I mean, I, I feel I like... I do, but I don't. Like, I want to do the right thing. That's but like, how I'm I feel. Not, I don't take people's criticism anymore personally. Right. You're going to get it. 
I like it's I, just part of it. I feel like turning 40 for me was like, wow, the fucks to give are so minimal. Or she turned 50. I can't wait. <laughs> 50 is amazing. I honestly 50, can't wait. 50s are I'm like, than 40s. bring it. What a blessing to be able like oh, just wait. We'll talk when you're 50. No, I'm like, Jen, you're so right. I'll be about 60. what? Tell me all of the things. No, it's just no. about it's it's just life. It's just life. It's experiences and the things you'll see you and Noah and the kids have got will have gone through and the knowledge that you'll gain, yeah. your company will grow and where you'll be. And we'll talk about it. It's I, a cool I place to be. Wait. It's it's fun. You seem to have such a beautiful relationship with your husband. How long have you been married? 22 years on Friday. Wow. Yeah, he's a pain in my ass. He, <laughs> he's the president of my company. You know, he's, he is. He is. He How is. is that working together? Well, we don't work in the same office, thank God. That's great. When we do completely different things. I stay on the creative side and he stays on the ops and financial mm. side. Uh, it's interesting. And I, he says this all the time. It's, it's, I always say it's harder than he does. Um, <laughs> he's he's like definitely Noah a grounding force for me. He's very chill and very mm-hmm. calm. Um, but it's great. I wouldn't be here today where I am and we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. That's Incredible. Yeah. I mean, yeah, thank God for him. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Cause I'm a creative. Like, I'm not good at building teams and infrastructure and Ugh. finance. No, thank you. It's so <laughs> challenging. Yeah. I'm like a magpie too. I'm like, ooh, bright, shiny objects. Like, that's what I want to right, be doing. Right. I'm like, I the energy, creative. the energy. And Noah's like, the energy is not in this conversation. <laughs> no, he, he doesn't. It's practical. Obviously, work with me, but he is, he gives me, the one thing that it's like you you can't buy great advice How many or years people have you guys to been guide married? you. We've been married. Well, we've been together for thirteen. Married That's a long for time. seven. I know. You guys have been together a long time. I know. We've been together for a long. time. You guys dated time. a long time before getting married. Yeah, we did. Why'd you guys wait so long? <clears throat> great question. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. TikTok. <laughs> How much older is Noah than you? Seven years. Okay. Yeah. Do you do date night? Like, what is your like it's a formula funny, for? A we try success? to. We try to once it's a week. Really hard. Yeah, but you know what? Date night now is more like just making dinner in the kitchen and just like chilling. That's my favorite. Just yeah. like being home together. Yeah. He works out a lot at the end of the day now, so he'll do like a six thirty workout, and okay. then we sort of hang after. And you know, the kids come and go. No, it, it, that's another thing. It's so weird. Shane's gone, and Drew is like, I'm going out with my friends. So yeah. So now. So now it's, I mean, I already sort of feel empty nesty. It's kind of strange because Drew's very social. So it's, it's kind of cool. We're like, what are we going to do? We like look at each other. We're like, let's go out and go do whatever. It's fun. That's fun. And it's nice to have that time to be together, but it is hard. We bring it home. It's impossible. We work in two separate offices. It's really hard. It is. It's really hard. I feel like. To turn it off. Yeah, it is. And like we both are bringing. like, how do you turn it off? I'm like, you can't. You don't. We work together. We're 24-7 Jennifer Fisher. Like we do one thing we've been doing recently is like, okay, like we get the thing out, like what happened, this, and it's like, that's it. Like he says it to me more now. He's like, you're no work. Like we're not talking about work. And that's I'm like, amazing. okay. Because he's a soundboard for me. Right. Like he's that one person in my life that I feel the safest to go to. He's also experienced in business. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I trust him. He doesn't necessarily know intuitively, I think, things that I do. But when it comes to some advice. things, like he just, he's he a good gets sounding it. Word of advice. He's a great sounding board and he's the same, super stable. That's what you need. It's, that's what I that's need. That's what you need. A lot of my girlfriends that are single are like, you know, what do I look for? Yeah. And like you want that, you want, you want a best friend, but you also want someone who is sort of the opposite of you that will chill you out. That's he's stable. so opposite of me. Yeah. We couldn't be more opposite. Yeah, Kevin and I are opposite too. You are? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Very I much remember so. when Noah and I first started dating. I'll never forget this actually. I was on a modeling job and there was a male model there. And he was like, oh, so what like what are your interests? Like you guys are similar. And I'm like, no, we're actually very opposite. And he was like, opposites don't attract. Like you can so you, you can't similar. be that opposite with your partner. And I was like, oh no. But I totally disagree. Cause you stay in your own lanes too you know we do and we don't and it, yeah it's that's what's interesting too when he tries to come into my lane i don't like it i'm like get out Same. you're not creative he'll like what about this i'm like you are not the creative that is no stay out of your i actually need out. to talk to you about lanes it's so funny that i just said that because i feel like you are you really are someone who just shows that you can create so many lanes in life like you have a 
your jewelry business, but you also have your incredible incredible Jennifer Fisher Saul set we are obsessed with. Oh, I love in that. In this office. I love that. The spicy is like out of this world. But like it's so amazing to see. So random. It is, but it isn't because you have Jennifer Fisher Fisher Kitchen that you you love sharing all of your food stuff that Dylan, by the way, is obsessed with here. Um got me I love like that she addicted. Knew my- yeah, she knew your drink. That's crazy. Well, she loves I love your her. Instagram. She I love loves her. everything you share. Um, that got me like addicted to following. But t- can we talk a little bit about that? Because I think a lot in life, like there is nothing that irks me more when you put you in it's a box. Usually a woman that will be like, stay in your lane. I'm like, honey, I've got a lot of lanes. Yeah, it's funny. Um, people love to do that to people. People love to criticize choices of paths and think that they know better than you. But the salt thing was completely, and I hate using this word, but totally authentic because I could not find any salt to put on my eggs in the morning. At the time, I'm intermittent fast now, but at the time I have Hashimoto's and I was eating protein in the morning and I couldn't find anything to put on my eggs Mm -hmm. that didn't have garlic or onion in it. Everything was like a steak rub or like potpourri. And I was like, "What? why is there no salt that's good out there that I can just use all the time? And that was my universal salt. My father used to ship me lemons from Santa Barbara And I never wanted to waste the lemon, so I would always grate the rind and dry it and use it for cooking. Mm. So the first blend was literally just kosher salt, black pepper, red chili pepper flake, parsley, cilantro, and this lemon rind. And I started putting it on everything, and Kevin's like, this is really fucking good. What are you doing? And I'm like, it's that salt blend on the side of the stove. So as one does back in whenever it was, when everyone's putting their avocado toast on Instagram and being really (laughs) annoying, I, of course, had to do that. That was me. (laughs) Totally. So I did it too. And Mm. I had my salt on top and literally everybody, you know, you couldn't DM then. People were like commenting like, what is that? What, what are you seasoning your eggs with? And I would just say, you know, and some editors asked. And at the time it was around holiday and Nina, my publicist was like, let's do this. We should do this as a gifting. So we sent it out as a gifting to editors. They freaked out, loved it. It's so good. And people wanted to write about it. And so the people were like, how do we buy it? And I was like, oh shit, (laughs) this is now a new product. That's literally how it started. I love so authentically we sell in a lot your of salt. flow. We sell a lot you of salt. are so just true to yourself. From the moment I met you, I identified that. Well, we connected when we met. Well, it, like, and Gabby had been saying, like, you need to meet Jennifer. Like, you're yeah, gonna love Jennifer. And weird. then we were sort of like just circling the same sort of people for a very long right. time until we met. And it was so funny because we did her podcast. I know. And I had like an hour to kill. So she was like, we're going to Jennifer Fisher. So I came in and it was like the same thing about you. But I I think what is the thing that drew me in about you was this warmth. Because like you see you and you're like, oh my God, you're so perfectly put together and cool. And But there was this warmth that you like saw me. I know that sounds so I had been wanting weird. to meet you though too. And I also think that we had like heard about each other. And it was also like, I was like, oh, finally, here she is in my world. <laughs> there she is. And then yeah. I have to say this because this is so funny. You guys were like, we're going to lunch. And I was like, lunch? I don't do lunch. And you're like, no, no, you're coming to lunch. And I was like, so I'm not getting sweet green. <laughs> like we're going, we're going to sit down. And it was just like, it was the best and we were there for each of other. my it life. Great. It was, it was awesome. It was amazing. I haven't done a lunch since, but I want I didn't to. Eat. You guys ate. I had a hot water thumb and I'm like, I'm like, Gab, this isn't lunch. I don't have time for lunch, but I thought we we're going for a coffee and then it right. turned into a lunch and I <laughs> sat there with you guys for a little bit. But yeah, it was really awesome. That was a cool connected conversation. It really was. Yeah. And then since then. I mean. And then I went to your birthday party and I the mean, rest is history. It's, there's and now nothing. And now I walk around with your arm waves oh, wait, getting ready. And you were Did doing you it with your makeup. I was like, I that's that. genius. How, it works. She wears the the arm weights, weights, you guys, yeah, arm on weights. her, yeah, on her wrist when she does her yeah, makeup. I was used, yeah, I mean, and I use your, I use, I use your, I use your, your band actually this morning for my legs during Pilates, and I use the ball for my neck because I was to so, release. I was so stressed last week, so I was just leaning on it. Yeah, yeah, it's. Great I need kit. to hear a day in the life. Like, tell me, I want to know exactly what you do the second you wake up. What's the first thing you put in your mouth? I, I want your full routine. Because- well, now I touch my crystal. Now I grab my crystal. Ooh, um, yeah. I've been doing that. And I've been really trying to not, to like take a moment. I take a, I take a few deep breaths. That's I good. chug a bunch of room temperature water. And do you touch your phone? I do. Okay. But I try, I, I'm try, of course, yeah. I try not to though. I mean, I, I, I do it more at night. Now in the morning, my husband brings me coffee. I'll text my husband for coffee because he gets up before me. 
So I'll text him coffee and he'll walk in and he brings me coffee in bed while I while I do check my phone. So that's literally the truth, what happens every morning. Okay. Um, what do you put in your coffee? I put uh, three trees almond milk that I heat up. I love three trees. It's the best. It's thicker than it's thicker than the other ones. I like a thick, thick and one. He's just so good. I Simple. drink it. I oh my god! I, I was in the Hamptons and I literally poured a glass of it at night and I drank it. And my friend looked at me like I was out of my fucking <laughs> mind. I was like, my father used to drink milk every night before bed. My daughter and it's a loves weird, it. comforting thing for me. And I hadn't done it in a really long time. And it was funny that I just chose to do it that night in the Hamptons. And um, so three trees almond milk. So no oat milk. Oat milk is inflammatory, <laughs> Melissa. She was like, oh, I cannot believe you drink it. I was like, is this oat milk? <laughs> seems a little thick. No. <laughs> no, so because of Hashimoto's, you're on a low am, inflammation. Okay. So I talk about this all the time. And hi, Will. I'm going to talk about you again right now because I always talk about Will Cole, my friend. He yes, wrote a book called Ketotarian that changed my life. Um, and I read it during, I when I opened my Beverly Hills store in LA when you had to still do the 10 days of quarantine. I was staying in a hotel and I bought a bunch of books and one of them was Ketotarian. And the moment I read it, I think it was timing in my life. I was about to turn 50 and it literally, it just, it's like literally like I got slapped across the face with like, oh my God, this is what you need to be doing. Stop fucking around. I was eating a lot of gluten. I was, so I've been gluten-free for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And during COVID, I was eating dairy again. Um, and I knew I needed to stop eating it because just, I just don't feel well when I eat it. And it was time to make some changes because I just wanted to feel better. I was feeling sluggish. Mm -hmm. I wasn't feeling great. So I was like, I'm going to give myself three days to eat this ketotarian way. And so I cut dairy. I read every single label. I made sure I wasn't ingesting gums. I stopped drinking sparkling water. Mm. Bloating. Uh, bloating. I stopped all the things. And I in, within three days, I was a completely different person. No seed oils. No agave. Okay. Um, I only eat coconut sugar. So what do so, you eat first thing in the morning? I intermittent fast now. I feel okay. better. If so I'm 16 really hungry, hours, I don't time it. I'm like a lazy faster. You're like an intuitive faster. Yeah, exactly. Like right. if I'm hungry, I'll have two eggs and a half of an avocado with olive oil and okay. my spicy salt. Like that's my favorite breakfast if I'm hungry. Um, there's a great company called AWG Bakery that makes these rounds and toast. That's the best grain-free bread oh, I think I haven't out tried there. it. I love it. I have to get it. It's amazing. Um, but she makes these little rounds and I make pizza on it. And sometimes oh, I'll make toast with it. She's got You've rosemary. You've shared it. I'm, I'm going to get it. It's amazing. They're like very heavy kind of bricks of bread, but you slice them and then you put them in the freezer and then you pull them out as you need it. So okay. whenever I need a piece of toast, that's what I'm eating or um, a cassava tortilla or something. But uh, so I'll do that if I'm really hungry. But most days I wait until lunch. Okay. Around 12 or 1. And it's so funny, sort of all of us in the office are kind of doing the same thing. So we're all like in the kitchen at the same time eating because right. we're starving. So it's some sort of a salad that has protein, whether it's an egg, avocado, and tuna, whatever it is. Sometimes chicken or shrimp. Canned tuna? Yes. Okay. I make the spa tuna. You guys all need to try it. It's um, it's made with a ton. So I don't like mayonnaise. I have a weird aversion to mayonnaise. I think it's disgusting. It's funny. It's There's just something not my about jam. It. I don't know what it is. It's a Creamy. It's a texture thing. And I don't, aioli, everyone's like, I'll make you an aioli. I, I can make my own aioli. I don't want to. It's right. not. It's just, I love olive oil. <laughs> I like it. I, I like my tuna to taste like a sub sandwich or something different. I put, you know, things Yum. in it that, yeah, delicious. Not, when I was pregnant, that's what I craved, like a tuna fish sandwich. Oh, really? Yeah. I ate a lot of vegetarian burritos with rice. Oh, yum. Yeah, it was delicious. Black beans. That was my go-to. So like good. those giant burritos that, that are stuffed great. with vegetables. That was my pregnancy craving. Mm. Um. And then like those Italian cookies, the the red, yellow, and green ones. Oh, really? Yeah. I got the almond cookies. So funny. So good. Uh, okay. I'm so well, excited. Sorry, I'm so, back to, okay, but so do you feel today? anxious when you have coffee on an empty stomach? No, it's my okay. lifeblood. Because the, like I do the coffee thing, like, and we'll talk about the booze thing because I mentioned it earlier. So I know we need to talk. Coffee about for me is like that's a non-negotiable. But recently, I was sort of just not feeling well again. Sort of like what happened when I stopped eating the dairy and all of the gluten-free products and the gums and all of that. And I dropped Shane off at college. I partied with all the moms when we dropped off. And I came home, went to Mr. Chow's, had some leachy martinis. And the next day I was like, I really feel like shit. I'm not going to drink for a few days. That was literally it. And then a few days came, turned into a few more days. And I was like, I feel like a different person. Like my, I have to function on such a high level all day long, every day. And I have attention I issues. So Same. I having that brain fog, which it was similar to the food fog that I had from, you know, this alcohol fog the day after, not even after drinking a lot, one to two cocktails with food. I know. 
was still giving me that same, and it's not a hangover. It's just this, you're slower the next day. And I don't like that feeling. I know. So I've been going with it and just kind of seeing, I'm going to, I'm actually going to We Care in a couple of weeks. Oh, wow. I've never been. I've never been either. My girlfriend wants to go for our birthdays this year, my best friend. So I was like, I'm going to take us. I'll let you know how it is. Yeah, let I'm me I'm excited know. to try it. So they're having me there for a couple of days before I go to LA for some work do events. Do you do colonics? I used to do a lot. I haven't done them in a really long time. Right. Uh, I, I haven't felt the need for them because I don't have. Tomorrow. I'm kind of excited. Oh, I can't. Wait. I used to. Get I them do gravity all the though, time. which is a different colonic system that they use, which is the reason why I haven't gone. But I've I'm super open. I've done all of them. Same. So have I've I. done them all. I know the ones Colonics that work freak best me for me. No, I love that. I just don't like because sometimes I just feel like you don't poop right for a few days after. Like it's just I don't love really? that feeling. Oh, sometimes you got to feel body. a little. <laughs> you will poop like crazy. No, you do. Sorry. But then it's like kind of like you're kind of. I know sometimes afterwards it don't. I don't know. You've done gravity. Yes. Okay. I've done gravity. I don't know what kind they do there. I need to find they out. Don't do, they, do, they don't oh, do gravity. Mean, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've done both. So we'll see. Okay. So I'm so I, inspired by this because I feel like I'm almost in a position right now where I'm like, you know what? I'm feeling so sensitive to everything. Like, in all the things. And I'm like, I have gone completely off the rails with food in the best way for me. I needed to just have so much freedom. It's summer because and you're with your kids. I just needed like, to, you should. I needed to really just let myself eat and want and, and be in the flow of all of the things, which I loved and I was so happy. But recently in the past couple of weeks, I'm like, okay, I'm feeling it's a weight in my. You have to like. It's a that feeling. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. A heaviness in my. Yeah. My head, that I'm like, okay, let me just listen to this. So I'm feeling very inspired with just fine tuning some things. I think the gums, heavy gluten, all of those things, like they do weigh you down. It, it, literally. <laughs> <laughs> literally but it's not about weight loss it's about it's and everyone's like oh it's like a diet it's so restrictive I'm like it's not i, I oh eat, i like, can't be restricted no i eat a ton of food right i just eat the right foods for my body that that feel right for me and i always say this to everyone i'm not trying to preach like a lifestyle or diet i'm i am not registered to do any of that right i'm not i'm just telling i'm just sharing with you what works for me same that's what i've that's always really, done that's really that's it like yeah and if it works for you then do tweak it out the way that you need to tweak 100%. it 100 percent you know? And the same thing goes with this like experiment you're in with alcohol because you know that's what led me. I'm it's been four years this really? November that I haven't had a drink. Congratulations. Thank that's amazing. You. And I don't call myself sober. It's not, it's just been this journey of really living life without alcohol. And it's truly because in order for me to manage everything that's on my plate, I have to be at a level. I understand. In order to, first of all, like feel excited about my days. And for, for me, alcohol knocked me completely off course. My anxiety was debilitating. That's another thing. Debilitating. That, I couldn't yeah. be with myself. It's crazy what it does to you the day after. and you, You're not really cognizant of it unless you're out of it. And so when you're looking back, like I look back now, even just like a few weeks ago, just the anxiety of dropping my son off at school and having all of those cocktails around that time because, oh, we're celebrating him going and or we're, we're you know, we're sad that he's there. Let's go have a drink and, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then that made it worse. Right. So uh, that's really what triggered it for me to, to change because I was not feeling well after. I was like, this is not, I'm sad and this is making it worse. I get de depressed. I get super down. And yeah. I just, I don't operate at a high frequency. I know how I operate and I know what, same thing right now. I'm like, oh, okay, let's take a look at how we've kind of just been living life. And like, there's some things I, I could yeah. try eliminating and experimenting mm -hmm. with shifting some things. And I think that's what it's really all about, you know, and like having this real check-in. Just listening being, to yourself. And really listening to yourself and being honest with yourself. Yeah, that's what it is. And because not making excuses for not doing something or doing something. That's another thing. So, and I mean, not being, you know, not having to apologize for it. I went out last weekend in the Hamptons and some of my friends were giving me a hard time about it. Mm. And it was very interesting because mm. I got the same shit when I started the food thing too. When I wouldn't eat french fries with them when we were having cocktails. And I was like, let's get a hand salad. And they're like, shut up. Come on, really? Like seriously, Jen? I'm like, I'm already that girl to you guys. So just like leave me alone. Right. Like, you know what I mean? I'm already that person to you. So it's just another level. This weekend, I'm not saying I'm not, I'm gonna go back next weekend. I'm not saying I'm doing it forever. Right. And you may have a drink tomorrow. Right. Like it's okay. Like there's no 
But now I'm super cognizant of it because now I'm like, okay, well, I've got a big, I've got a lot going on. I don't want to feel shitty. So I'm just not going to drink for the next week. I'm a big mocktail girl. I'm obsessed. Sugar, no. But I was just going to say, I don't you know, know that I you had? would be down with it. You should totally get this. I was at One White and they made me the most amazing. It was just literally, it was water with uh, mint and ginger. Mm, and they shook it good. and put it in a martini glass. Right. I and always, it had fresh mint and lemon. It was delicious. I like non-alcoholic liqueur though. Oh, I've By the way, it. I mean, I feel like you have to check out I'm a few brands. Yet. I'm going to give you. All right. I'll try it. You'll be mind blown. Okay, wait. So you have a salad and we need to just oh, finish the, salad, the day. The salad. So you have a salad for lunch with a protein. Oh, oh I think you're talking about the salad that's launching. Oh, no, this but week. you are launching a salad. I mean, me and my salad. Yeah, How there's exciting. a new one. There's a new one. But no, for lunch. So salad for lunch normally. Well, first of all, let's just say what salad it is. It's with it's Nicole Berry, a bon Berry. I know I love her. Obsessed. Love. Her love. salads are already like rad and amazing. And, and this one we're doing, I'm really excited about. It's the New York Fashion Week Survival Salad. Oh. It's delicious. I can literally she having makes it the tomorrow. most amazing vegan feta too which amazing. i wasn't sure i was gonna love it it's amazing but it's 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 romaine watermelon radish um pepperoncinis avocado <gasps> pepperoncinis yeah Favorite. it's so important and people I put them underrated in everything. underrated it condiments some zest. veggie uh, she makes these amazing castle Toronto olives that she marinates oh i know they're my favorite i'm obsessed they're- with them to die Those for. olives, um, my mustard vinaigrette, her vegan feta, which is like mind-blowing, amazing, cucumbers, red onion. It's 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 a good salad. Okay, everyone has to go get it at Bonberry. Mart. At Bonberry. I'll be having that for lunch. You will be having that for oh, lunch. Oh, I will. But yeah, so for lunch and then for dinner, so I, I don't snack do as snack? much as I used to. Yes, I do. So we'll be at the office. I'll have, uh, make sure you're, so I eat a lot of seaweed snacks, but you have to make sure that they're not, so you think you're being healthy grabbing these seaweed the seaweed snacks. Oils. It's the oils. So Gimme makes a really good one. That yeah, I, I like the avocado oil. I love it. It's and so good. And then sea snacks, the wasabi and the lime is amazing. It's hard to find. You can get them on Amazon. But those are all clean. Uh, so almond, good. Raw almonds. I love Trader Joe's raw almonds. Mm-hmm. I love Rancho Meladuco dates. Those are all you can get. You can get those at Bonberry. Yum. Um, I do a lot of olives. A Davina olives. Love the olives. Fresco Toronto olives are amazing. Castle Toronto olives. I do black olives. Same. I also like I've, those olives like that I ate in a can when I was a kid. The black ones that my mom used to always put out at dinner with like a fruit cocktail. I still love those. Olives are so olives underrated. Olives are another underrated thing. I eat 100%. a lot of pickled veggies and olives. I am obsessed with pickled everything. Oh. Like my, you would love, I'm going to make you a salad one day. Oh my God. I would love that. I can't that. wait to eat yours, but that. like. Jeff's Kitchen. Do you buy all of Jeff's Kitchen's clean no. pepperoncinis and all that kind of stuff? Oh wait. Yes. 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 Okay. And jalapenos. So that's, all that kind of stuff. It's so good. I do have a recipe on my website, how to make your own pickled jalapenos though. Oh. And salsa, but I don't do nightshades. That's another thing. So I stay away from you nightshades. Don't do nightshades. I don't do, uh, I don't do. Tomatoes. Yeah, plant. I, I love tomatoes, but I try to limit it. I love hot sauce and peppers. I try to limit love. it. Love. I'm a condiment. Like queen. Obsessed. I love it. Obsessed. Me too. Yeah. Like if I could start a condiment brand, I would. Mm. Like, cause I just. You I, will. She I will. I love mustard. Remember that. <laughs> what do you eat for dinner? Dinner is normally some form of a hot protein, like a piece of fish, or I do a lot of ground turkey. I'm weird. I have a weird aversion to eating birds. Mm. Uh, so I like ground meat. I also like ground beef. Uh, I don't eat as much beef as I used to, cause it's very hard to digest and I don't feel well after, very. but I love beef. I'm not a vegan. Okay. I love eating red meat. And I need it because my iron's low. Mm-hmm. Um, you eat fish. I do eat fish. Okay. I do. Brown and like chicken. A I'll do chicken. Yeah. So I'll, I roast a lot of kale. I roast a lot of vegetables with my spicy salt. If you need your kids to eat veggies, put my spicy salt on it with olive oil and roast. I mean, asparagus. I'm doing Sweet that. potato, anything. I do uh, all of that stuff. I need a sweet potato and potatoes. That's one of my things. As long as I, it's cooked correctly, I need a potato some often. Substance. Often. Yeah. Yeah. Potatoes are potatoes. sort of my grounding thing. Love. Potatoes are important. There's, and Japanese sweet potatoes are so, so good. good for so your good. skin. So good. It's like an ultimate. Yeah, I'll do anything secret. that's good for my skin these days. What are some of your like ultimate beauty secrets? Hmm. What do you want to know? <laughs> Dan, Bel- Dan Belkin in New York, Jason Diamond in LA, and Dr. Kat Chang in LA. <laughs> I'm telling you, everybody, I'm open about all the shit that I do. I think it's really stupid that we lie about be. it, and it's a huge disservice to other women to lie. Yeah. I I've agree. done everything. You name it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, so, I, 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 but yeah, and I'm talking about it. And I'm happy yeah. to send uh, doctors. My endocrinologist <laughs> is Dr. Sierra here in New York. It's a funky little office. She does her own bloods. Sharing is caring, people. Like, I don't, you know, it's crazy that people like 
try to keep all that self-esteem stuff. I did, the gatekeeping of all of that right. stuff is so ridiculous to me. No, I, I respect it. I feel like it's probably like the number one thing people are like, what filler did you put in your cheek? I'm like, I, I've never put filler in my cheek. Like I've, you know, done baby Botox, but I've had this weird awakening that I'm like, I don't know that I want to do it anymore. I don't. But I don't know. Anything. You look perfect. I'm, I'm really getting into just doing more acupuncture facials. I did a lot of acupuncture before I had my kids. Actually helped me get pregnant, I believe. I'm really? a big believer in acupuncture. I yes, I do it all the time with my massage. By acupuncture. Yeah. Do you know Monique? No. Food pharmacy. She's amazing. She no. comes to your house. She's Wait, incredible. Wait. Okay. I go to Aura and, and I have to say it's been one of the most life changing practices really? for me. It's just, it's regulating my nervous system, and I just, I am someone who needs constant regulation. Like some people can go. I. I it's like I have to meditate every day. I want to meditate every day. I get to meditate every day. So that's just one of my tools that keeps me. That's why I asked you about the coffee because I've realized from getting to a calmer, I think, some days place, how much coffee spikes me. I love it though. It's, I love it's it. An I've addiction. Been the, the matcha full thing is real. The matcha vanilla zen. is. I mean, I, every it's day. so good. I have like Every day. At least now. Courtney I could my office talk home. to you forever. Are they cutting us off? No, I just, <laughs> I, I'm going to rapid fire you, but you're just oh, such God. an open book. Yeah, I'll tell you anything. And I really appreciate and respect it like woman to woman. It's Thanks, just, girl. it's really a breath of fresh air. Thank you. It's, you're so New York too. I'm so from California though. I know, but you're <laughs> so New York. I am and I'm not. I mean, I don't know. I guess so. I mean, I've been here for so long. It could have been your entrance. I was like, oh, she's a New Yorker. <laughs> That's true. I hate being late. I think it's so rude. Sorry. Again. No, well, please. I mean, I really try not to be, but somehow always am just a little bit working on that, working on I was early today. Proud of that. What's your biggest motivator in life? My kids. My kids. I think leading by example is really important as a parent. It is. My father did it. My mother did it for me. I think it's important to to do that for your kids. I agree. I do. You're so lucky. I think I parents. think allowing your kids to have the opportunity to mirror your behavior as an adult or at, you know as they grow is very important. I could not agree more. What's your end all be all self care ritual? Like, what's that one thing that's your like grounding beauty practice, or it could be just be wellness. I like to sit alone. I like to be alone. Me too. I really like to be alone. That's why, like I said, I'm going to We Care for two days and my friends are like, oh, I want to go. I'm like, no, you can't. Mm. I, For how much I'm out and about and people think that maybe I don't like to be alone, I love to be alone. Same. It's important. And if I'm, you know, I don't meditate as much as I should. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I, I wish I loved meditating more. It makes me sleepy. Mm -hmm. um, that means you need more rest. I know. <laughs> I definitely need more rest. Um, but I do, I like to be alone. To me, that's like like the ultimate self-care. Even just this weekend, I was at my friend's house in the Hamptons and they everyone's like, do you want to come? We're going to this, we're going to this. I'm like, I'm going to sit outside by myself for two hours. And it was heaven. I think that's the beauty of getting older. You realize you don't have to do everything. All the things. All the like, things. Especially when you're like away things. with all your friends. Like go to, t you know, you guys do you. I'm going to do me. It's important to learn to say no. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to be really around people to who accept that though. And honor it. I think if you if you say it, they will. And you know, in time, sometimes they give you a hard time. Oh, come on, you know. Yeah. I think it, it is age. I think you're right in some way that it's respect of others as you age. And so maybe when you know your friends are younger, they're not going to respect what you need yeah. as much because they want to be around you, and that's right. nice. They want you to be involved, and that's nice too. But it is. It, I one of the the reasons why like Noah's lifestyle has always worked really well with mine is because a lot of the nights like, you know, he's doing, he's going to business dinners he's or entertaining he, frequently, but like it's changed, like not as much, not as late. He picks and chooses, but he's, he's very tired. actively going, you know, going to his places regularly most nights. And it has, it's given me the ability to be with myself. Like I, Isn't that nice? I need it. Do you read? I do, but I don't always finish books. <laughs> <laughs> I don't read. I've picked up many. <laughs> I don't read. I don't I'm have the attention for it. I wish few. I had the attention span to read. I, 
Mm-hmm. I'm reading I like a book. Me too. Love. I, po- love. I listen to love. a podcast love. every single love day podcasts. when I'm doing my makeup. Yeah, when I walk or my when dog, I'm walking. I listen to podcasts. Although I don't walk my dog that often, I make my husband do it or my kids. But well, a lot whenever of I'm walking, I walk him from work every day. I try to do that too. That's another thing. That's one of my self care things too. Is to just to unplug at the end of the day, and I'll call my mom a lot of the times on the way home, and like just like small little rituals like that that sort of take me out of the day yes. into my night is important and feels so good. So important. Well, so many people. My favorite thing when I'm walking around New York is when someone like looks at me and they like take their little like headphone and they're like, I'm listening to you. That's cool. It's that's amazing. It's a, because Isn't I'm the such a, feeling? it's the nicest feeling because I'm such a diehard podcaster too. So, but I am reading a book right now. You have to read. I know it, it, it's so good. I'm going to, the karma of success. Okay. It's I like, I picked it up and I, I was meant it. to be reading this book right really? now. Really? Swear to you. And it just feels. Okay. You know, I'll check it out. Yeah. I've got to fly a little bit in the next few weeks. So maybe I'll try. But okay. I started the long tail. I just started that about business. Okay. So. Okay. You'll let me but know. But I'm not doing well at reading it. I'm like slow. Me too. I'm a very slow Easily reader. distracted. I've, I, I honor my, you know, the fact that I need to read pages a few times now. Like my comprehension yeah. sometimes. I'm like, okay, this is. Yeah. I know. I know who I am. Yeah. I know what I struggled with in school. And this was me all too. of it. Me too. But now I read things I want to read. And I do, it does inspire and fuel me. Yeah, listening is easier for me though. Listening is much easier for me. I love to highlight though. I love to go back and look, yes. Oh, that's amazing. And and just kind of almost like a cliff notes, like go back again when I need it. And I'm like, okay, remember that. Don't forget. Um, Okay, one more. Oh God. I guess I'll let you go. I'm sorry, (laughs) you guys. I could just like, can you move in? (laughs) Totally. I'll do it again. Oh, we will. We'll do it again. We absolutely will. What does moving with your heart mean to you? Listening to yourself. Mm -hmm. Listening to yourself. It sounds so easy though, right? So many people don't. I think it's just really hard to get up, to get caught up with, and maybe this, like I said, again, comes with age, getting caught up with what you think people's expectations are of you. Mm. And you know, you can, you know, advice that you can be given. And I say this all the time that, you know, I've been given horrible advice by very powerful people. And I think that you have to learn to listen to what is right for you. You know what, you know it, you feel it, you question it. If you think, if it feels wrong, it's wrong. Right. But you you, feel it. It's so listen to conflicting sometimes when it is like a powerful person or someone who's done something so well. But, but they, they haven't, haven't done, done what, you're, what you're, doing. you're doing. Exactly. Exactly. We're all doing something different. And so you can take that. I'm not saying not to listen to advice, but you need to take that advice and take pieces of it that are going to work for you. It's like not eating the whole cake, like have a slice. Oh, yes. You are just incredible. Thank I'm you. so you? grateful to Gabby for like bringing right? you into Thanks, my Gab. world. It was just destined to happen. And, you know, when I think about people I want around my table and, like, conversations I want to be having, I just, like, see you at the head. Oh, thanks. You know, I I think it's so important to surround yourself with people and, and women, especially for me, that understand the depths of, like, what it takes to... Do all the things we're doing. I think a lot of people are there and get it. Not a lot of people want to share. So I think it's about finding those people that want to share in your journey of what you're doing. Yeah. And it's it's okay for people not to want to share and not to want to be a part of it too. Yeah. But you feel it and you find those people. Well, I'm so grateful for you. I'm grateful. Thank you I'm so, so glad I found much. You. <laughs> I mean, Thank you. This was so fun. This was so fun. And it just like, I had this moment of, just like knowing I'm right where I need to be. Like having conversations with you like this, I'm like, this is what just gets me going. Like I I live for it. I love being able to have this opportunity with you and and to share your wisdom. And thank you. Thank you for having me. 